In the last video, I showed you how to use the external interrupt on a pin on the microcontroller. And the external interrupt is fired by a push button on that pin. But in the program, the interrupt handler handles pins or lines 4 through 15. And in this particular example, I'm testing for only one of those lines. Let's add another button to the microcontroller so I can show you how to separate those two button presses, those two interrupts. And it's going to happen within the same interrupt handler, but on a different line or a different pin. The pin that I will use is located at pin number 44. Pin number 44 is here, port A, pin number 11. Let's add another push button to pin number 44, exactly the same way we did with the other push button. Now that we've added the button to the circuit, I'm gonna go ahead and add another line to the LCD that describes what we're gonna be showing. And that's pin number 11 on port A. And let's go ahead and get the pin 11 on port A set as an input on the GPIO. We don't need to enable the port again because we've already done that here. It looks like I actually did something wrong here. I'm only specifying five, not 15, and it probably looked like I was doing 15. So I'm gonna change that. Okay, so that's, that's correct. And now I want to duplicate these two for the pin number 11, the interrupt mask register and the rising edge register, the rising trigger. So I'm just gonna change these to 11. So now we're enabling pin number 11 on port A for input, and we're adding the interrupt, external interrupt control parameters for pin number 11 as well, or line number 11. This doesn't have to change because this is good for lines four through 15. And in here, the handler, it's gonna handle everything between four and 15. So we need to duplicate this one. But we also need a new counter too. So let's make a, a counter first. And we'll just call this one pin, port A pin 11 counter. I'll duplicate this one. I need number 11 here to test the pending ready bit. And we'll do this one over here to reset that. And we'll use the new counter. And now we need to display the counter in the while loop. So this is gonna go on line one, and we'll use the 11 counter. So this is all that should be needed. Let me go ahead and build and see if it builds correctly. Looks like it worked. And I'm gonna flash the microcontroller and see what happens. The microcontroller has been flashed. And when I press the number, pin number 15 button, let's see what happens. Okay, so the display is showing the counter going up when I press the 15. And when I press the pin number 11, let's see what happens. Okay. So it looks like we have a successful build and flash and implementation of an external interrupt using push buttons. One major caveat to using the external interrupts and assigning pins to these interrupts is that you can only use a single port for the line that you select. Say you're selecting line number 15. So the pin associated with 15, the port that you select, like pin port A, and you select pin number 15, you cannot use port B, pin number 15, or port C, pin number 15. You can only use port A, pin number 15. If you remove port A from pin number 15, and you use port B, for pin number 15, then you're able to do that. You can see in this figure 22, external interrupt event GPIO mapping, that the external interrupt number from zero, one, 
all the way to 15, you can see that they're all tied. All the ports are tied to a single interrupt line. So you need to choose between which port that you want to use for that particular line. In these videos, I've only used port A. And in my tests, I've only been able to get port A to work. I'm not actually sure why. I've done many tests with port B, port C, port F, and I've connected them to internal interrupts, not interfering with port A and the pins that I'm using. So I'm not actually certain if I'm doing something wrong or maybe that I have a damaged chip on my breadboard, but I was successfully able to do it with port A. So for that part of the experiment, I think it was a success, but because I wasn't able to use a different port, I failed in that respect. And I was doing the testing for probably about a week now, so I'm not going to continue with the tests for a different port. I think I've done a sufficient job in covering interrupts in general, but I will probably revisit interrupts at a later time because I want to start to cover other features of the microcontroller. If you're able to get another port to work on a different line or different pin, let me know in the comments. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead. You can do it. Click it. Go ahead. And also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh no, that's not me. Oh yeah, and go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.